Hey guys, Ned here from On Air Solutions, and we, today we are playing around with the new tech NDI HX PTZ1 camera. Uh, we just got a unit in, so I've been playing around with it, seeing how it works. Um, as you can see, it's a nice little unit. I'll show you how it moves around a bit. So I have preset positions. See the camera responds pretty efficiently. Yeah, it's a great little uh, camera. It's about the size of my hand. So let me just show you that. So it's nice and light, small, easy to mount. Um, it's uh, very handy. It's got a SDI and an NDI output, uh, NDI HX, I should say. Uh, there is a difference between NDI and NDI HX. HX is a lower bandwidth, it's about 10 meg, um, works over Wi Fi as well. Um, this unit does not have Wi Fi in it, the, the PTZ1, um, but the uh, new tech Connect Smart Spark, which I have one here. is a NDI HX unit as well that is Wi-Fi enabled. So, um, I've shown you how it looks when it's moving about. Let's have a look at how we configure it up. So, when you, first link, when, if you have a older TriCaster, a, uh, uh, like a 460 or a TC8000, like our unit, um, you will have to install the NDI HX drivers. Uh, make sure that you upgrade your TriCaster to the latest update before you install the NDI HX drivers, or it could cause your entire system to crash and you'll have to uh, factory reset like I had to do uh, because I had updates as late as March 2017 and um, that didn't work, so I updated to uh, the current one, which was August 2017, and that worked perfectly fine. So no issues since then. Um, just need to make sure that you are up to date first. So um, when you configure your camera, um, firstly, you'll need to select PTZ. Uh, um, firstly, the NDI will come in on a net input if you're using a, uh, a TriCaster 460 or an 8000. Um, in the newer ones, you can um, modify your camera input to be NDI inputs. Um, so under the output configuration, there is a PTZ control tab. I just selected the net input, the connection type as NDI, so that is the PTZ connection type. And then that assigns that to PTZ1. Down here where your DDRs and graphics are, there is a PTZ tab. Um, your PTZ cameras are down the bottom. We've got the first one selected, and then these are your preset shots. So uh, let's sh show, you. to do a preset shot, all you need to do is position the camera, and press this button right here, and that saves your preset shot. Click on it and it moves. Uh, response time is pretty accurate. Um, 
it will need to arrive at the position of the last one you clicked. So if I click several in quick succession, um, it won't change its trajectory halfway through a movement. It will have to complete its movement and then go to the last thing that you clicked after that. Um, there's uh, software controls for position, zoom, Uh, but there are also controls on the surface. So let me show you how that works. Um, you'll need to use the modifier keys to select your PTZ. So the shift key um, allows you to select your PTZ camera through the ME delegate. Um, let me just uh, show you here. So shift, ME delegate, if I select two, that's selected PTZ camera two. So I've just let go of shift and it's, um, and it's just a normal ME delegate. If I press shift, it's your PTZ control selector. So select camera one. If I continue to hold shift, I can use this. to control the PTZ camera. To do preset shots, you select the control button instead. So shift for selecting your PTZ control, control for selecting your shots. So that's the shot that's stored in number seven. That's the shot that's stored in number six. Uh, those shots are stored here. As you can see, um, obviously only the first eight shots have a hardware button that you can press to select them. Now uh, let's have a look at quality, shall we? If I can show you here, this is SDI. Um, so that is a raw SDI feed that you're seeing right now. And if I switch this to NDI, I find it very difficult to see the difference. So the SDI, NDI, let's see if I can get a shot with some noise where you actually can tell Focus. Oh, maybe I can. there we go. So you should be able to see this is NDI currently, um, and if you look in this area, when I switch to SDI, that's SDI now. So you can see there's a bit more noise, sharper edges. Go to NDI. Um, there's encoding artifacts um, that sort of covers up the noise a bit, uh, but it's still a perfectly uh, usable picture, um, especially when you're not focusing on the most noisy environment you can find. Um, I show you, I did some uh, testing on our green screen earlier, so. I show you our green screen over here. So I did some uh, testing on that to see if there was much of an effect between using SDI or NDI source for um, uh, a, a green screen um, chroma key. I'll show you how that turned out. So this is a uh, SDI close-up. I'm lifting my hand so you can see the gaps between the fingers because that'll be the most noticeable um, 
spot for artifacts in your uh, chroma key, especially when, I'm, when you move around. This is same shot, NDI. Um, it's pretty good, but you can tell there's um, the the edges are not quite as smooth. There's a little bit of um, a encoding step, I guess you could say, and um, the response for the uh, the um, chroma key in between the fingers is a little bit slower on NDI. Uh, here it is on a white background. SDI, NDI. So you can just see a little bit of artifacts on those edges there uh, compared to the SDI version. And then these are the wider shots. I picked an orange background so, I, so to deliberately show off the green um, because it clashes quite significantly. Um, that's obviously not as obvious on the um, white. So that's SDI. And that is NDI. And you can see the artifacts on the edges around my fingers. Um, The other thing is I did a test just so I could show off the noise on the encoding as much as possible. Um, just as a demonstration, this is not really what you would expect to see in actual um, in a uh, you know environment that you're going to use the camera normally. I'm just doing this as a demonstration to show you the difference. Um, if we take this is your SDI noise of the green screen I'll show you what settings I use to do this so uh, so down here in our live mount settings. I've got a zero, zero tolerance, but a little bit of smoothness. So that will um, show off the edge, I guess, between where the, um, the tolerance cutoff point is, which here is obviously at zero. So I'm just showing a little bit of noise there from the, um, from the chroma key. And I've done the same thing with our NDI settings, exactly the same settings. So this is your SDI, this is your NDI. And as you can see, the uh, encoding is blatantly obvious <laughs> when you're looking at it um, like that. So I just did that as a demonstration so that you can see how it actually affects the picture um, in extreme circumstances. Uh, I'll go back to showing you what it looks like normally. This is, um, this is SDI. This is NDI. So as you can see, uh, the effect is not um, uh, massive, and I would say that the convenience of using NDI HX and being able to have um, up to eight cameras on a single network um, sort of makes it um, a very um, convenient use case, I would say. So. Uh, that's all from today. Uh, thanks for checking us out. Um, go to uh, onair.com.au to find out more about us and our store uh, is store.onair.com.au. And uh, thanks for uh, 
checking in. Uh, ciao.